And now for the news in detail. First, the local news. The National Oil Anointing Ceremony was organized at the Raja Mahavihara in Thissa Maharama under the patronage of President Rajapaksha. The auspicious time for oil anointing was at 10.06 a.m. today. The National Oil Anointing Ceremony was organized by the Ministry for Indigenous Medicine. The oil anointing was carried out attired in gold-colored garments, the auspicious color and facing the north with oil mixed with essence of bow leaves and standing on kohumba leaves under a canopy of bow leaves. The president also planted a sapling of a rook atana plant at the Thissa Maharama Rajma Vihara premises. Chama Rajapaksha Mahindya Pabe Vardhana, Thissa Karaliyadda and Rohita Begunavardhana joined in this occasion. Meanwhile, a keen enthusiasm was displayed by the people countrywide in fulfilling the traditions related to oil anointing for the new year. An oil anointing ceremony was organized at the Rajamaha Vihara in Bellangvila. Gamini Lukuge and Gamini Tilakasiri were among those present in this ceremony organized under the guidance of the Venerable Professor Bellangvila Vimalaratanathera of the Vihara. Oil was also anointed on the head of the elephants of the Vihara. Meanwhile, the estate fraternity also joined with keen enthusiasm in fulfilling this tradition. They organized it on a grand scale. The Eastern polity participated in this New Year tradition with much determination. A large gathering was present at the oil anointing ceremony held at the Agrabodhi Rajama Vihara in Kantale. Another highlight was the anointing of oil on the heads of the elephants at the zoological gardens in Dehivala. The event took place under the patronage of Deputy Director Bhammika Malsingha. Among those present were members of the Mahasangha. The Elephant Orphanage at Pinnavala was another location where this traditional ceremony was organized. Oil was anointed on the heads of nearly 80 elephants of the orphanage. Sabargamo Chief Minister Mahipala Herat and Kanaka Herat participated. A stranger makes a surprise visit to the golf face green where the people were spending their leisure time. It was none other than President Rajapaksha. A large crowd was at the golf face green with the dawn of the new year. The President visited the location and met many of the visitors. This is the first traditional new year the nation is celebrating with the total eradication of terrorism from the country. Everyone has received the opportunity of moving freely throughout the country. The crowds extended a warm welcome to the President who had consolidated the heritage of the motherland. All of them seized the opportunity to extend their warmest greetings to the President for the new year as well as for the resounding victory achieved at the general election. The President also inquired into the development work that is being carried out at the Colombo Harbour. He also monitored the development affected to the golf face green. The President instructed the officials concerned to expedite construction of the marine drive which is coming up across the golf face green. Domingo Silva, Geeta Anjanaban Vardhana and Ports Authority Chairman Dr. Priyat Bandhuvikrama joined the President on this occasion. Sri Lanka's tourist arrivals have jumped by 50.3% in the first quarter of 2010 compared to a year earlier. In March, tourist arrivals reached 52,352, up by 53.7% from a 34,065 a year earlier. After the war ended, the hotels in the country are in a race with time to provide more accommodation and facilities to the anticipated influx of tourists to the country. Leading hotels in the country are adding more rooms by refurbishing the old ones and struggling to find accommodation for the tourists who are mostly from Britain, Germany, France, India, Japan and Mideast. Many hotels are investing in new furniture, bars, restaurants, swimming pools and extensions to cater to the tourists. The hotel and travel index on the Colombo Stock Exchange has almost tripled since the war's end and the total number of hotel rooms is expected to grow from about 15,000 to 22,000. The tourist board says it is hoping to attract 2.5 million visitors by the year 2016 and to earn an annual income 
of $2 billion by the year 2016. Prime News continues after this quick break. Welcome back. Iran is mulling over to increase the amount of tea it buys from Sri Lanka. Interest to buy 50 million kilograms of tea from Sri Lanka annually. This is 20 million kilograms more than what it purchases currently. In discussions with the Sri Lankan government last week, Iran's ambassador in Colombo, Mahmoud Rahmi Gorji, disclosed the Iranian government's plans to buy more tea from Sri Lanka. The diplomat has noted that the political environment in Sri Lanka is becoming stable and the country is heading towards prosperity. United Arab Emirates and Russia are the Sri Lanka's largest tea buyers. Sri Lanka's tea board expects the Iranian government's move to push the prices of Sri Lankan tea in the world market. Sri Lanka is getting a $50 million loan from Asian Development Bank. It is to continue with public finance management reforms aimed at paving the way for increased investment in underdeveloped areas, including those severely affected by conflict. It will strengthen public resource management, giving the government the fiscal space to step up spending in lagging and conflict-affected regions. It will build on the success of ADB's earlier fiscal management reform program in Sri Lanka and is supported by a technical assistance grant of $2 million from the government of Japan. The project will support the efforts of the government of Sri Lanka to promote sustainable and equitable development in the post-conflict environment by providing greater scope for increasing investments in reconstruction and infrastructure. The United National Party has initiated disciplinary inquiry on Shant Abe Sekara over his involvement over the assault of UNP Putalam District Member of Parliament-elect Range Bandara. This was reported by the Daily Mirror website quoting UNP leader Karujai Surya. Meanwhile, the family of Bandara said that he will undergo two more operations at the Colombo National Hospital next week. For the inquiries, he for rather the injuries he sustained during the assault, which included injuries to the head, arm, and legs. Palitarangi Bandara, who contested at the 2010 general election, was assaulted in Chilau last Saturday and was admitted to hospital. Five people, including UNP member Shant Abe Sekara, were arrested over the incident. An Indian court in Kochi has ordered to deport five Sri Lankan sailors who were stranded in Kochi for 19 months after the owner of or rather after the owner of the tug abandoned it in the mid sea an indian media report said the kochi judicial first class magistrate court which issued the order to deport the sailors also ordered to pay them 12.8 million rupees as compensation according to the report the owner abandoned the panama flag tug mt malakas after both engines of the vessel were damaged on August 10, 2008. Following engine failure, the vessel was towed to Kokin and the towage company brought legal proceedings. Four of the original nine crew members, including the master and chief engineer, were repatriated in September. Moving on with news here at home. Tamil film director R.V. Uday Kumar is on a mission to open the doors of the Indian film industry to talented Sri Lankan artists. He is the creator of his such as Kisaku Vasal, Singaravalan, Chinna Counter and Jayaman in the early 1990s. <laughs> On his decision to choose the bubbly Sinhalese starlet Nadisha Hemamali for his Telugu film Rascal, Uday Kumar said a lot of talent is bottled up in Sri Lanka to the detriment of regional cinema. The film Rascal is to go on the floors in Hyderabad later this week. Uday Kumar said the Sri Lankan film industry has to be motivated work on a wide canvas. Lankan artists and filmmakers have to shed suspicions about working with filmmakers from outside. The veteran Chennai-based filmmaker said in his own way that he wanted to open new vistas to them. 
He wanted Nadisha to be more than a Sri Lankan artist. Through the film Rascal, she is going to become an Asian star, the veteran Chennai-based filmmaker said. It is not surprising that Udaya Kumar has a soft corner for Sri Lanka. His wife's grandfather was S.M. Nayagam, who had hit the headlines in 1947 by producing the Sinhalese blockbuster Kadavunu Puranduva and then gone on to make many more successful films in the island nation. Nadisha, who entered the world of the big screen with a scintillating performance in Julia last year, was brought to Udaya Kumar's notice by the Sri Lankan talent hunter Silhan Rachman, who had earlier introduced Jacqueline Fernandez to Bollywood. The film director said that among the hopefuls he auditioned, he found Nadisha to be very talented and also seemed to understand the culture of the South Indian film industry.